Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achono. Welcome back to my C++ series. Today, we're going to be talking all about threads and in general how we can parallelize, that's a hard word, how we can make stuff happen in parallel because most of the computers or processors or devices that we're programming for nowadays have more than one logical thread of processing that they can actually do. So far, all the code that we've been writing in the C++ series and the OpenGL series as well, if you guys are watching that, has been on a single thread, which means that when we actually write code for those episodes and for those series, we're literally just making the computer do things one kind of line of code at a time or one instruction at a time, which is fine. A lot of the things that we've written have obviously not been particularly fast or that they haven't needed to be really like well optimized or really quick because we haven't really written any heavy code, any code that has that will actually take the device a long time to compute. It's been really simple stuff. But as we get into more complex programs, it's very beneficial for us to actually move off certain work to different threads of execution, not just for the sake of kind of performance, but also for the sake of what we can actually do with that. For example, we've used scdcin.get to request input from the user into the console. However, we can't do anything while we're waiting for input, can we? We're literally just waiting to receive input and that's kind of like a while true loop that's just going on infinitely and until we press enter that's it like our thread is blocked but what if we could maybe do something else like print something to the console or just log something or write a file or whatever while we're actually waiting for user input we still want other things to happen that's one example that's probably really simple to understand but anyway we're just going to dive right into the code and see what we can actually do all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just show you kind of how threads work and what we can do with them. So I'm going to include this thread uh, header that we have here, which includes uh, the threading support basically into this file so that we can use the thread class and everything. I'm going to type in std thread. I'm going to call it something. So I'll call this a worker because it's going to be like our worker thread. And then what I, need, what I need to do is pass in a function, optionally any kind of arguments that it may need. So let's make a function called do work. This is going to be the word, this is going to be the function that actually performs what we want to happen on another thread of execution. So I'm going to pass it into here by just typing in do work. If you guys haven't seen my function pointers video, definitely check that out because this is how this works. It takes in a function pointer. That's why we just pass in do work without parentheses or anything like that. Video link will be up there. And as soon as we write this actual code, it's going to immediately kick off that thread and it's going to do whatever is in here and it's going to keep running until we wait for it to exit. So the way that we can actually wait for something to finish or wait for a thread to complete its work is by, ty is by typing in worker.join. Um, so this is our thread object, of course, and then this join function is, is essentially going to just wait for this thread to be joined. Now, thread joining is a, another kind of potent, potentially complex topic that might be worth discussing in more detail. But basically in like in C sharp and kind of more modern programming, it's just called wait or wait for exit or just, yeah, wait is probably reasonable. Basically all that this does is it just says, hey, can you wait on the current thread for this thread to finish its work. So block the current thread until this other thread has completed. So because this stuff is running in parallel, we have our main thread, which starts off a worker thread, which does its work. And then eventually what we're doing by writing this join kind of call here is we're saying on the main thread, wait for that worker thread to finish all of its execution before we continue on with, with whatever our main thread has. So what that means is that this cn.get line of code will not run, because it's the next line of code after this, it will not run until everything that is in this function has finished. And we'll see this in, pro, in, uh, we'll see this in practice in just a second as well. So as an example, what I'm going to do now is just, let's just dive right into it and I'll demonstrate that example that I made with cn.get. If we just write a normal program, maybe we want work to be done that prints something to the console. We'll say it prints working to the console, just like that. And it's going to kind of keep running forever. We essentially want it to just run forever. So I'll put this into here. If we were to want to write something like this that performs any kind of work that happens until we tell it to stop by maybe hitting enter, how would we go about doing this? Well, we know that what we could do is we could say, well, okay, cn.get. So maybe we want this while loop to continue until cn.get actually returns something because cn.get will just wait for us to basically press enter. 
So we want to write a program that waits until we press enter, but the line of code that waits until we press enter blocks execution because it's waiting for us to press enter. So it can't actually print working continuously because it's waiting for us to press enter. So on one thread, this doesn't really work. We need to be able to do two things at the same time. We want to be able to wait for the user to press enter and repeatedly check to see has the user pressed enter, but then we also want to log working to the console. So let's look at one way that we might solve this. So what I'm going to do is write a static boolean here called s working, and uh, or we'll, we'll call it s finished, and I'll set it equal to false because we haven't finished yet. And then this while loop will run until finished has been set to true. So while not finished, keep printing out working. And then what I'm going to do over here is stdcin.get, which blocks this thread until we press enter. And after we press enter, I'm gonna set finish to true. And then I'm gonna just wait for this worker thread to join. So what's happening here, if, if we look at this kind of concurrently and how it's actually running, this is printing working as fast as it can to the console and that's all it's doing. This thread is waiting for us to press the enter key. And when we do, it advances to line 19, which sets finish to true. The next time this checks, checks the state of finished, it will see that, oh, it's been set to true which means that I'm finished, so it's going to advance past this while loop and that's the end of the function, thus that thread has finished. And this is going to make sure that we don't do cn.get until that thread has actually finished its execution. So if we just hit F5 and see what this actually does, you can see over here that it's repeatedly printing working and when I press enter, that's it, it stops printing working and if I press enter again, it's gonna terminate our program because we have another cn.get over here which waits for that before it just closes our program. So, maybe instead of printing working as fast as possible, we might want to say, well, actually, let's wait for a bit. The thing with multi-threading is that if you continually do things as fast as possible like this, it is going to kind of result in like 100% CPU usage for that thread, which isn't great. So what we can do is we can say, well, wait for a bit. And what I'm going to do here is just tell this current thread to sleep. So I'm gonna write sleep for and then one S, which stands for one second. And in order to write code like that, I'm gonna to have to using namespace, chrono, literals. Okay, so basically I'm just saying, after you print this working line of code, just sleep for a second before you go back up to this while loop and continue printing working until finished is set to true. So if I hit F5 now, we should get working printing to the console once every second. And there we go, you can see that it's ticking like that, working, working, and if I press enter, then that's it, it's done. And in fact, let's just maybe write something to just indicate that it's done. So after worker.join, I'll print finished. And let's see what that looks like. So there we go, working, 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 enter, and you can see we finished, and that is the end of our execution. So that's a very basic example of how threads work, arguably, fairly useless, but the point of this video is just to show you, first of all, how you can access threads in the C++ API. Of course, this ends up boiling down to platform specific code, but you just need to include thread. And when you just make a thread object by typing an std thread, and then you make a variable out of it and you pass in a function to the constructor, that immediately kicks off that thread, doing whatever work you've made it do. And that thread will continue until it's done. You can always use like that thread dot join to actually wait for the current thread that's kicked off that second thread to actually finish its execution in case you need to do some kind of cleanup or wait like this for, for the actual program to terminate after all the threads are done. Um, that's as far as the API goes, there's really not a lot of things you can do. There's not a lot of things you need to do. The concept of threads is really, really simple, but it gets really complicated really quickly, like a lot of things do in C++. The std this thread thing as well can just make sure, or you, there's also a this thread object that I used here. If I just grab my laptop again, we have this std this thread, which you can use to actually basically give commands to the current thread. Cause you can see that in this thread, I don't have access to this thread object, even though I'm actually on it. So what I could do, for example, is just print the thread ID that I'm on. So I might say something like, um, std c out started thread ID equals, and then I'll print the actual thread ID by typing in std this thread get ID and then I'll copy that line of code and also print it maybe after we finish over here 
And these thread IDs should be different because they're running on different threads. So if I hit F5 to run my program, you can see we start at thread ID 8348. And then if I hit enter, you can see it's a completely different ID because they're actually on different threads of execution. We've created another thread to print our working stuff to the console. So yeah, threads are really important. We're going to be talking a lot more about them in the future. They're really useful for speeding up your program. The primary purpose of threads is optimization, but not only. You can also use them to do things like we did today that isn't really possible to do because we literally need to be able to do two things at once. If you did have your own cn.get function, you could, of course, alternate between work. What I mean by that is, let's see if the users press enter. If not, let's print working to the console then we do that again. Like you can do it on one thread. You can't with cn.get because it blocks the entire thread. But if you had your own method, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. So it's not like things are completely impossible. It's just more or less that some things are a lot easier and a lot faster if you actually utilize threading. And that's a huge topic which we will continue to explore in the future. If you guys like this video, you can hit the like button. You can also help support this series by going to patreon.com forward slash the churno. Link will be in the description. Huge thank you as always to all the patrons that support this series. It would not be here without you. I'm going to get out of this forest before it gets too dark. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. He's done.